Hello, everyone, RSRMA members. Thank you so much for joining us on the webinar. I'm Lisa Kaufman, and we are going to be doing an overview of uh, a couple of the modules that are available to you on the um, Cypher system. And with me, I have uh, Joseph Telezinski with Telecon Solutions and Daniel Whitfield from Val Verde Unified School District. And I'll go ahead and pass it over to these two gentlemen and tell you a little bit about the exciting fun stuff that they have in store for you. Thank you, Lisa. <clears throat> uh, this is Joe Telezinski, and uh, uh, I am with Telecon Solutions, makers of Cypher software for California school districts. And uh, as many of you may remember, we uh, did a presentation for you last year on the, the existing product at that time, the base product that handles your ed code leaves and your uh, workers' compensation claim information. And since that time, we have added some additional uh, available modules and features, and we're going to talk about those a little bit here today. Uh, we, of course, still have the existing product, and these two new modules are designed to work uh, with, those, with the original product or uh, as a standalone. Uh, so if uh, you're interested in what you see on this but uh, not interested in the original, that's fine. We can uh, uh, certainly accommodate that, but if you want them all, they all work together. Um, so uh, I am here today, as Lisa said, with uh, Daniel Whitfield from Valverde, and uh, he's going to actually explain to you uh, the new risk management case management module, uh, which was designed primarily based on his specifications. And so he is the best and most qualified person to tell you all about it. Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> so um, I'm actually really excited about the development of this module. Um, it's been many, many years I've worked as a, as a risk manager for municipalities, and I've been with our school district for now almost nine going on 10 years. Uh, and as uh, if you've worked in risk management for any period of time, you know that there's always the challenge of how to organize and manage the various different types of cases that come across our desk or issues or incidences. And so um, over the years, I've been trying to develop um, ways of making tasks more efficient and making uh, it more efficient to be able to manage these things. And so uh, with the help of Cypher, I've uh, been able to give them some input on how uh, it would work best for us, and we have been working with them uh, in this now beta environment for the past month and been automatically been able to turn key from our old system, and we are fully operational even just in the beta environment. Uh, so what we're going to show you today is what what is available now. We're expecting actually a number of other functions to come into play by July 1, um, and so, but I think will give you a global overview of what the system can do. For those of you who are familiar with Cypher, as you can see here, we're on the home page or the home tab, and there's the calendar of tasks and different events. Um, you can filter that task and by who the tasks are assigned to, the task type and the status, and those that are in green indicate that they've been completed. Those that are in red are still outstanding. So as you can see, there's some stuff I got to do that I uh, needed to get done last week. Uh, but I am working on it. So that helps me immediately see where, where I am as far as what needs to be accomplished. Um, our next tab here is the list of our claimants, and that has to do with our claims. Uh, for workers' compensation, and that tab for claims is for workers' compensation, as those of you who already have Cypher are aware. What is new with this case management module is this tab that says cases. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and it will open up a list of all of the cases that you have. At the top here, we can filter by the cases that we want to see. Um, and we'll be able also to download a report based upon our filter shortly. <clears throat> what will be coming out next week, actually, will be a little export tab up here. So if I um, go ahead and select the type of cases that I want to see, and I'm just going to go ahead and pull our uniform complaints. I'm going to hit refresh. And I'm seeing all of the uniform complaints, 
but I'm also seeing those that are closed, so I'm going to narrow down my selection to just those that are new, open, or have been reopened for some reason. This now immediately tells me when I'm looking in here how many uniform complaints that I have open. I can see I have 35 uniform complaints that are open and active, um, and then I can sort them based upon the case number, the incident date, or even the case title, or by their status, whether they're new, open, um, whatever is there. <clears throat> I will be able to then hit that export button and it will export into an Excel spreadsheet so that I can utilize that for various reporting uh, purposes. Uh, and so it's a really easy, convenient way of being able to get data uh, out in um, the numbers of claims or numbers of different various types of cases that we have. To add a new case, we would go here to this button and click Add, and then you'll be able to see all of the features that you have available to you in case management. We would then, the system will automatically assign a case number. If you already have one, you can edit that and put that there. Uh, you can put in the date of incident and the date of the report. Um, and then a drop-down list of who it's reported by and who will actually be owning the case. So for instance, in my office, uh, I might have a clerk that might be inputting information as a data comes in of an incident occurring or a new case being opened, and they would be the one to be selected as reported by, and then they would assign it to the appropriate staff member that it would go to. So for example, if we received a uniform complaint that is associated with human resources, we could assign that uniform complaint to the director of human resources, and it wouldn't necessarily be assigned to me as the risk management director. And we can also then be able to open this up to other departments to be able to utilize it for case management. Um, the date the owner is assigned, a department will give me a drop-down list. I can select which department uh, is associated with. I have a primary site, um, and for you know, it could be the district office, it could be any school site, and then you can have a secondary site. I find that um, that has been needed for various different types of cases. There might be two different school sites or two different facilities uh, that are uh, associated with a particular case. Um, but it's not mandatory, it's not a required field. Uh, then you would select a case title. I have a particular uh, case title protocol that we use in our office, but obviously every office could be different. So for example, if this was a uniform complaint, I would put UC, the last name of the person that may be, um, let's see, make it a doe, and then the school site, it might be, uh, or it may be Ed Services, and the date, uh, kind of a number there, so that when I look at it, I can see exactly what that is, what this case is. Everyone would have their own ability to have whatever case title protocol uh, that's desired. Um, then you can put in a case summary. And then we have a field here for a TPA claim number. So if it is a liability claim, or property claim, uh, and you, or you have a third party uh, issue where there was another uh, vehicle or an automobile claim where GEICO sends you their claim number, you can actually put that in there and be able to search and find the particular claim based upon that field. Um, you would have your status, which would be required. You can, uh, this would be also uh, customizable for the, um, for the users, for the, uh, for the district to be able to select what kind of statuses they want to have there. That will help with the workflow process as to who does what with what, when, and where, uh, at what time. So I'm just going to go ahead and let that open, make today's open date. Obviously, we don't have a closed date. And then I can have a customizable case type. So for instance, with this, we've said it's a uniform complaint. But I even have things here for like employee grievance processes, health and welfare tickets and, and, and um, issues, um, a liability claim, a loss control case, a property claim, a public records request. Uh, so let me just kind of go through just as some examples that there was a liability claim. 
Um, typically, I don't know if we have the case categories and subcategories. Those would be customized based upon what the district would desire as far as having a case category or subcategory. Uh, in my case, for example, on a uniform complaint, uh, I would then determine there if this is a student, or this is a parent that's making this complaint, um, whether or not it, what, what particular board policy this would fall under. Um, I can also select case attributes, whether or not this particular case needs to go to the Board of Education, um, or if there's a board notification that needs to be made, or if the case is in litigation. And I can select that this particular incident uh, happens to be a litigated matter. That would also trigger for various security options uh, that you would have for your users. So if, if so you might have clerks that could be using the system. Once it goes into a litigation mode or in a confidential mode, then that would not be readily available for, for anyone to just go and appear and to see. So that's why you have these various case attributes for security uh, options. So once I've done this, what's really neat right here at the bottom, we have a document location. So everyone stores documents associated uh, with their files in different, with different media. So you might uh, use Google Drive, you might use a Windows network folder. This location right here, you can take the link to the Google Drive and copy it there, and it will automatically, uh, you will be able to click and go to that location. Uh, so you can uh, put any kind of hyperlinks here or an address for any kind of location for where your folder for documents would be stored. So you can scan in documents, receive them, put them in a certain location, and then be able to point to them and be able to see them all uh, just readily at the click of a button. I'm going to go ahead and just add this case. And you'll notice that it automatically populated the case number, and it automatically put this TPA claim number as that number here, on, um, unless you go in and change it. So once we receive a TPA claim number, we can go edit that, and I would then edit that and make that, for example, that. I can just save that at any time, and you can you would get a confirmation of the fields that you want to change every time you want to save. And what did that say? I need a sixth character. Our particular protocol, because we know that our TPA has at least a sixth character number. For their numbers, we have it as, uh, but that it would also be customizable. So now once we've opened this case, we have the case file. Here's our little folder. And if you notice our recent records, just as when you use Cypher for claims for workers' compensation, you will now see that there. You now have, and this is what I think a lot of you will be excited about, is the, the ability to relate cases to one another. So let's say this happens to be a uniform complaint um, that's in litigation, but as you know, a lot of things can bleed together. A lot of different types of uh, the way that you handle different situations. So we might actually have a related workers' compensation claim with this particular incident. We might have a property claim related to this incident. So I could simply go over here and I would be able to search for the particular incident that would be related to and I could just uh, dictate, and this is customizable too, what type of relationship uh, that other case would be. At any time now, when I'm in this case, I can say, oh, we have related cases to that. So for example, let's say if we have a uniform complaint that's being handled by a different department than handles workers' compensation, they can then see, oh, this person has a workers' compensation claim. I need to notify of risk management or workers' compensation or payroll. Uh, so there's a lot of value uh, to having the ability to link cases together and have related uh, cases. Um, you would then have another section for adding parties. You can literally add a party 
uh, to context, and this is the same as adding claimants, I can do a search or add a new one. So for a uniform complaint that comes in from a parent, we don't have it in the database, we can simply add them in. Or if it's an employee, um, we will just add the employee. Uh, what's nice is you can then determine what the relationship, uh, even though you might have an employee in your contacts, based upon a case that may not be their relationship to the case. It might be an employee, but it was maybe an auto accident or a property claim with the employee, and it's not really, that's not their role as part of this case would be as an employee. Their role might be a parent. So we have an employee, but who's also a parent, and they filed a, a uniform complaint. So we can then say that this individual's relationship to this claim is the parent. We can also add all of our legal counsel panels and various um, uh, claims adjusters. So, you know, if you have multiple li cla uh, liability claims open, you might have different claims examiners handling different, different claims, and it's very difficult sometimes to just kind of remember who it is. Uh, you can just go ahead and add them as the related party, and when you open up the case, you know exactly who your examiner is. You would have all their contact information right available to you when you're open in that case. The next item is our open activities, and this is where we would create a task associated, uh, and we can assign a task. It's very similar to uh, when you're working with uh, Cypher in Claims. But what we would do is select a, another customizable drop-down list. I typically, uh, when I'm doing something, I might um, ask for my secretary to calendar an appointment for me because uh, especially if you're working with a liability claim and you have a deposition to schedule, uh, it's, it's a lot of work associated with that. I might not be able to do that myself readily available. I can just go ahead and assign that. So when my secretary has time, she can just go and look at her calendar, filter out to see what her tasks are for calendaring appointments, and then she can spend time calendaring appointments rather than jumping from one thing to the other all day long. Um, it's a much more efficient process to be able to do tasks in that way. With any of these tasks, I can assign a specific due date so that individual knows by tomorrow and it shows on the calendar, this is what I need to do today. Or if it goes past it, like you saw on some of mine, they turn red. So they can say, oh, okay, I gotta, get, I gotta get to those. So things don't fall through the cracks. If you're using email, if you use uh, Outlook calendar, a lot of times those kind of things can fall through the cracks really easily. So this is very helpful for that. I can also add any attachments to this particular task, which is nice because then my secretary can simply open that up, see that I, if it's a send correspondence or calendar, I, she, can, she or he or she can actually open that um, and be able to print whatever the correspondence is uh, and mail it out. Um, so you can attach any documents that you want there. Uh, why is my so if I, I can go ahead and save that, um, but I'm not going to because I don't want to fill out too much. I want to get to the uh, other things. So once this task is completed, it will actually go down here. Once it's been um, marked as completed, it will go down in the activity history. So what's nice about that is that whenever I open up a case, I can look immediately down, sort by due date, and see exactly what the history of the case is, what has happened and the dates associated with it uh, immediately by looking at it. Um, I also have ability to add notes. So for example, if someone comes in to the office and I'm not in the office, but it's related to a certain case, any staff member can look up the case by the name, right, and then put in a note. So I can make the note type. We can say that it was, and this is a customizable list list as well. And I can make the note, somebody walked in. And um, yeah. 
and then there could be uh, more information put in there. Mrs. Jones came in to discuss with you in the calendar an appointment uh, or provided or uh, left this information and they can attach that information uh, to that particular note. Um, any kind of activity that occurs. So what I, what I like to use this for is, uh, especially with like a, a liability claim, if I attend a deposition, I just sit down with my laptop, open it up, pull up the note, and it, this is the type of note would be a deposition. And I will make my deposition notes there, and I'm going to make that, want to make that confidential. And so once I save that, Once I save that, it goes into the notes, and then I have my notes forever uh, and is marked confidential. So in case uh, I have different security settings, so other people cannot just see those particular notes. And the last section is for our expenses. Now for our liability cases, most of all of our expenses, of course, are handled um, through um, our third-party administrator, but we get a monthly loss report that says what's incurred, what's paid, what's reserved. And what I like to do is to put a one line item there that says what's been billed, what's been paid to date, so that I can see immediately how much is, what is actually incurred or still incurred on that case file. If it's a property claim and it's a small claim and somebody that uh, they, uh, they're, like for example, we have one now where uh, an individual's vehicle window was um, broken due to a stone that was thrown by one of the um, district mowers when they were mowing the ground. Um, we can actually track those expenses. It was $100. Uh, we go ahead and pay for that, and then we were able to tell how much, what the expenses were associated with that particular case. Um, it could, this could be anything from um, let's say there was a student discipline process that you've opened and used for case management, and there's restitution involved with that student discipline. You can track what the expenses are or what's being, um, what we're expecting to get in. So there's all kinds of different uh, reasons uh, that you could possibly potentially utilize that section. Now that you have everything here, this is how you can consistently um, keep track of everything regarding your particular case, have a history with every particular case, and it's totally customizable for the user because obviously every department is going to handle different things, different kinds of things, and this is the ability to handle not only uh, be able to track this information, be able to have it as archived and be able to make reports for your uh, for your administration and for your district cabinet, but also be able to track what is happening, who's related, and, the, and be immediately have access to the, all the information you need as you are working on a case. Once this case has been closed, or determined to close it, all I have to do is select edit and then close the case. When I do that, uh, it will automatically populate the date closed section the date closed field with the current system date. Um, if it's a different date, let's say, for example, I don't know that a case or a claim has been closed by our third party administrator until I get the monthly loss report. Um, but once now I know that that, place, that claim is closed, I can go in there and close that claim on that specific date to coincide with our loss report. So now that I have that shown you all that open case, what's nice about this and what I really, really like is my ability to maintain this filter. Uh, this filter saves uh, whatever my last based upon the user. Uh, so as you can see, I'm still only looking at my open uniform complaints and I can sort by what I want to sort by. Um, I'll be able to export that if I want or I could just see all claims. Or I can see, let's say if I say, if somebody asked me how many uniform complaints did we have um, 
fiscal year of 17-18. I can select this, select all, and then be able to refresh. I don't know if we pulled over everything, but so from there, I can see that we had four uniform complaints within that time period. Um, obviously, we did have more than that. This is a kind of a limited thing of data, but uh, as you can see, I can do it by fiscal year. I can search and filter down um, and be able to get to where I need to get to um, and, and be able to manage the case files that I need to. Another nice feature is the search because let's say that a staff member uh, is somebody has just walked in and says yes I have um, a property claim and I want to know what our deep, what what my status is on that um, what we can do is simply search and put in the individual's name or their last name, and staff will be able to immediately find that case. So as you can see here, there's a number of different types of cases that I have. I have loss control as an example, as, as a case type. So every year, we have classroom emergency boxes that need to be replenished, uh, and that's a project that goes on every fiscal year. It happens every summer. Well, there's a, there's a lot of things that go into that, a lot of communications with the school sites, with the site secretaries, an exchange of, of information regarding boxes that need to be um, um, replenished. So we use that to be able to um, track what our tasks are, be able to assign tasks associated with that, be able to track where we are with it. Um, And then even put in here, so we put in that first email, the secretaries, administrators, uh, upload that so that we have it. Once you've uploaded that, if you select it, when you open this, it opens up an Outlook, and you can actually reply all or resend it. So then it was really easy and convenient. Rather than having to go to Outlook and try to find that, that email, it's already in there. You can go ahead and then track how many times you've had to follow up. Um, I'm sure a lot of us can relate to the times that with a lot of cases, you put in a phone call or send an email. Um, that I, I, I hopefully, I'm hoping no one else experiences this, but many times you have to do a second or a third follow up. And if you're simply using email to do it, it's very easy for things to fall through the cracks, not with case management. With case management, you go in there, you see, oh, there's, this thing is outstanding. I have a diary date on it. I can pull up that old email and, re, and, and resend it and then put another task to do a follow-up and make sure that I've been received a reply. And let's see here. And I believe that covers pretty much the, all the functionality of that case uh, management system. One thing that I want to show here is that under system management and your exports, there's a way to get a real quick uh, export cases here. And what that will do is export all of our case files in an Excel spreadsheet that I can very quickly filter through using Excel. Just say okay. And I can filter through and actually do pivot tables and all kinds of neat things just really quickly by doing that export and I have immediate um, access to up to up to date data. Uh, what's really nice about that as opposed to the system that I was using is that uh, the reporting um, was delayed overnight. The reporting module was um, something that had to be updated overnight to be able to access. So if I did anything today, uh, I wouldn't be able to see it in my reports today. I would have to wait till tomorrow. 
Uh, with this, I can immediately, and you saw how quickly that came up, I can get any kind of report that my management uh, might be inquiring. Um, and so as far as robust reporting, uh, that's just the fastest, one of the fastest ways to be able to get to that. And I just, uh, and the, I know that there's some more development happening and I'll let Joe talk about that now um, of what's coming up the pike, but uh, which will have a lot more analytics. But um, I believe that will cover all the functionality of that case management tab. All right. Well, thank you very much, Daniel. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, as you have all heard, he's clearly the expert on it. I wouldn't even try. Um, he knows it better because he actually uses it for real. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the new FMLA uh, module. It is intended to be uh, an add-on to the original Cypher product. Uh, the original Cypher, as you may recall, does your ed code leave tracking and integrates it with your workers' comp if, it, if it's a, uh, an industrial case. Uh, and all we really need to do now to use the FMLA is to set up a claim. Uh, as, as you may or may not recall, uh, original Cypher does ed code, whether it's industrial or not, so uh, it doesn't have to be an industrial injury that we're talking about. Um, whoops, and I'm going to search, and let's see if that finds what I'm looking for. There we go. Okay. And... So we find this particular person, and they've got two injury claims here, and I'm going to click on the September 14, 2017 claim, and that will take me to that injury claim. And you can see, for those of you who are current Cypher users, we have this whole new section now, and for those of you that aren't, um, uh, then you don't know the difference. But uh, <laughs> in any case, um, this is the add-on for FMLA. So regular Cypher users, you're not going to get this unless you pick up the add-on for FMLA. And what this is going to do is when you come down in your claim to enter your work status, uh, let's say it's an off work order, you're also going to select whether or not this time is counted against their FMLA, CIFRA, and or PDL time. Uh, so it does require that the user know whether or not it, it, it applies. Um, but once it's selected, then whatever that work status is, however many days off it is, whatever, is going to then be tracked against the appropriate uh, type of unpaid statutory leave. Um, and they do interrelate with one another. We're, we're aware of that. We've accounted for that. Um, you'll see that uh, in the FMLA dashboard or whatever you want to call this, um, the event date, that's the, uh, uh, the initiation of the type of leave. The event reason, we, we uh, uh, have it set up so that you'll put in a qualifying reason for that type of leave, uh, and then you'll know what it is. And uh, you may have more than one reason why that person uses FMLA or CIFR leave uh, during any uh, given time period. Uh, so those will all be handled and integrated together. Uh, and what that means is if you look here on the right-hand side, you'll see that we have three columns, the start date for each of the different types of, of leaves, the estimated end date. In other words, if that person is off work uh, and continues to stay off work, when is this leave going to run out? And, uh, and then, as of today, how much has been used of each of these three types for this particular claim? How much has been used for all other claims or qualifying reasons? put together, the total used for all, and any remaining. So if they've used two weeks for one reason and one week for another reason, we're going to keep track of all that, keep it together and separate so that you can see both, uh, and then know where they're at in that process and how much time they have left. Down here in this section, you will also see a list of any other uh, claims that were set up to use FMLA, CIFRA, or PDL, um, and it just shows you Kind of the same thing as you see here above. Uh, you'll see the event date, the event reason, and the amount of each of the leaves used for that reason. Um, and if you want to go to that claim, then you'll be able to click on the link there, and it'll take you to that specific claim if you need to work that one. And when we say claim, 
uh, it's just our way of saying a reason for the leave. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean like a worker's compensation claim. It's just uh, uh, the terminology that we use to reflect that there's, that there's a leave for a reason, and that's the reason, whatever that claim is. Uh, and that's really it for the FMLA portion. It's pretty straightforward. Thank you for your time today. I apologize for the abrupt ending. We were interrupted just as we were finishing. Uh, however, uh, we were done. You have all the information. And if you'd like any more information, please feel free to contact Lisa Kaufman at Keenan, and she can get you directed to the right person who may have the answers for you. And uh, otherwise, I'd like to thank Lisa Kaufman for giving us this opportunity to present to you. Daniel Whitfield for all of his assistance with the risk management case management module and being a huge supporter. And uh, I'm Joe Telezinski. Thank you for considering our new Cypher modules. Have a fantastic day.